I'd like to welcome you to our service today in our small church here in Fuerteventura. We have a slightly different congregation this week. It'll be a slightly different congregation next week as members of the congregation slowly coming out of lockdown start to join us. We are St. James Fuerteventura, Ferti Church, and wherever you are in the world, you're more than welcome to be a part of this service today as we gather together to worship our Lord Jesus Christ. You will find that all the words will be on the screen, my words in orange, and if you can respond with the words in blue. And you might wish to have some bread and wine or something else to drink later in the service so that as we participate here, you can participate at home. The theme of our service today is looking at that distinction between love and hate and how we focus between the two. So let's join together as we open our hearts to God, as we welcome him by his spirit into our lives, as we worship. Wherever we are, God is with us by his spirit. The Lord is here. His, his spirit, spirit is, with is with us. Loving Lord, Lord open, open our hearts to your presence. presence. Open our ears to your voice. Open our eyes to see your kingdom here in this place. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Jesus says, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. Do not let your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And now we sing together that wonderful hymn of praise that we know as the Magnificat, the Song of Mary, Tell Out My Soul.
we have made our peace with one another. We now come to make our peace with God. Let's reflect in a few moments of silence anything that we might need to say sorry to God for, for the things that we've said, done or even thought over the past week. And so we say sorry together, as we say, Almighty God, our, our Heavenly Father, Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour, in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. Thank you that in your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, you have forgiven all that is past. Grant that we may evermore remain in him and he in us, to the glory of your name. Amen. Jesus gave his life for us on the cross so that we can be forgiven. The good news is that to all who are truly sorry, and believe and trust in him, Jesus says, your sins are forgiven. Go and sin no more. Amen. Amen. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. This week we will affirm our faith using these words from Paul's letter to the Colossians. Christ Jesus is the image of the invisible God the firstborn over all creation. For by him all things were created, things in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or powers or rulers or authorities, all things were created by him and for him. He is before all things, and in him all things hold together. And he is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning and the firstborn from among the dead, so that in everything he might have the supremacy. For God was pleased to have all his fullness dwell in him, and through him to reconcile to himself all things, whether things on earth or things in heaven, by making peace through his blood shed on the cross. Our reading today from Matthew's Gospel is brought to us by Steve. Matthew chapter 10, beginning at verse 24. A um, disciple is not above the teacher, nor a slave above the Master, it is enough for the disciple to be like the teacher and the slave like the master. If they have called the master of the house feasible, how much more will they um, malign those of his household? So have no fear of them, for nothing is covered up that will be un covered and nothing secret that will not become known what I say to you in the dark tell in the light and what you hear whispered proclaimed from the housetops do not fear those who kill the body but cannot kill the soul rather fear him who can destroy both soul and body in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a penny, yet not one of them will fall to the ground unperceived by your father? And even the heirs of your head are all counted. So do not be afraid, you are more value than many sparrows. 
Everyone, therefore, who acknowledges me before um, others, I also will acknowledge before my Father in uh, heaven. But whoever denies me before um, others, I will deny before my Father in uh, heaven. Do not think that I have come to bring peace to the earth. I have not come to bring peace but a sword. For I have come to set a man against his father and a daughter against her mother and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law and one foes will be members of one's own household. Whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me and whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me and whoever does not take up the cross and follow me is not worthy of me those who find their life will lose it and those who lose their life for my sake will find it this is the word of the lord I thank you, thank you, God. God. the demands of discipleship demands that's a hard word isn't it when jesus sent out his disciples on their mission to proclaim the gospel throughout the world as bob spoke of last week he didn't make it sound very easy did he or even very attractive this is where the tough nature of their job was spelt out in honest detail in today's reading, Jesus warned them that they were not to expect any better treatment by the world than their master had himself. I think if Jesus were alive today, he would be advised to repackage his message to be a bit more attractive, don't you? A PR expert would say, less heavy on the potential suffering angle, Jesus, and more on the eternal reward. Disciples these days might be asked to carry out risk assessment appraisals. But, what Jesus wanted more than anything else was not to have 120 half committed disciples, but he wanted 12 fully committed ones. Those 12 fully committed disciples would change the world. In the words we hear Jesus' great call to radical discipleship, his call to a total commitment. But you know, following Jesus may not make our lives easier. As a society, we are facing an epidemic of apathy. Those who run organisations often complain that it's hard to find people who will take on roles of responsibility. They will not commit to regular attendance or support of others if it doesn't reflect their individual input to the world. Joining things has become too much of a commitment. Jesus' mission discourse here is a get out of the volunteers campaign like no other get out the volunteers campaign even like no other, change in direction. I think that to a large extent, we all become the people we're expected to be, don't we? Not wanting to change our safe lifestyle. If you tell a child to be afraid of walking through a stream, then she is. If you tell someone they can't do something or need not do it, they often won't. We must train ourselves to be brave Christians, willing to take the risk, suffering the heartbreak of changed relationships. I believe we can all relate to that. However, sadly, true discipleship does bring division. Is it not a little bit resentful to use us, use this passage in the Bible today that's been chosen as our text? There are some subjects I often feel it's a bit difficult, let's leave that one alone. And this one is at the top. I often want to leave it out. When I saw this week's readings, I must admit, I thought, oh, maybe I should offer for a different week. Jesus tells us to love our enemies and then turns right round and encourages followers to turn against family members. In Luke's translation, he uses the word hate, a very strong word. And the fifth commandment explicitly commands us to love and honour them, doesn't it? It just doesn't seem to make sense. It's difficult. I don't profess to know the answers, of course. 
and sometimes those who claim they have the answers are the ones less likely to hear from God. My thoughts are that's not what Jesus is really telling us to do. He says family members will be turned one against the other, mother and daughter, father and son, often turned against one another because of debate about what Jesus said, did and what he stands for, as of course are different religious groups. The people who heard the words of Jesus recorded by Matthew knew exactly what Jesus was talking about because it was happening to them. Because of their devotion to Jesus, many of them had been cut off from the rest of their family. And when love for Jesus is not shared in a family, Jesus does become a divider. And this is not because Jesus fails to offer himself as peace, but because some family members fail to love him supremely as their peace. If we are to believe Jesus, we must understand the gospel, which means good news, does not always bring people together. It does divide them. So what happens to family loyalty and relationships when Jesus comes first? That's what he's talking about. It is a painful subject and I know this. I believe we need to understand that Jesus doesn't despise family, not yours, not mine, but he does redefine them. We're all faced with competing values. Daily we make decisions in which cultural values may be run up against our faith values. The quickest way out of the discomfort may seem that we should rely only on social, family or cultural norms to the exclusion of faith values. But Jesus says, consider faith. And he said they sometimes will conflict. This is where we need to put the values first. Family and values are all very important to me, as I sure they are to you. Family is who we are. And we couldn't change that, even if we wanted to. Even the gospel writers give us Jesus' family tree. It was important for them to see where Jesus came from, for us to understand. And of course, Jesus' words from the cross were to make sure his mother was looked after. It can be really hard to remember how loved we are by God sometimes, because we tend to measure our self-worth by the love and affection that others show us, don't we? We need to remember every love triangle confronts us with two questions. What is your most important relationship? Who do you love the most? In the Bible, the idiom word for hate is to love less not to hate, to love less. And it's often used in the Old Testament. I recall that at our dear daughter's wedding when she did her vows, she said her first love was Christ. Her first love was to Christ before she made her vows to her husband. A husband to be. It has been said to me that when performing wedding ceremonies, the chaplain should sometimes say right before the couple repeat their, the couple repeat their vows, this is the second most important promise you will ever make. That makes one think, doesn't it? The first place is where Jesus wants us to be. Jesus wants to be on the list of priorities in our lives. Everything else will then follow. And that's what he's talking about here. Today's gospel holds before us and confronts us with the many love triangles in which we all live and struggle. It demands we need to make a choice. Does that mean we reject our parents, our children, our spouses, and other love interests? No, that isn't what Jesus is saying or asking. Jesus is not demanding exclusivity, but he is asking for a priority. It's not easy, but it wasn't easy for Jesus either. I only read yesterday that it's not the job of Christianity to provide easy answers to every question but to make others aware of the mystery. God should not be the object of our knowledge, but the cause of our wonder. We may lose friends. Sadly, sometimes we may disconnect from our families, but it's all about counting the cost. However, it is costly because it cost one man his life. Amen. 
Jesus's call to us, to all of us, is will you come and follow me? prayers today are led by Lynn from Coletta. And now we bring before our God all our heartfelt wishes. And when I say the words, your kingdom come, would you please respond with your will be done. Dear gentle Saviour, for all our weaknesses, which are too many to count, give us your strength. For the times when we are cross, make us calm. And when we are lost in worry and anxiety, uplift us. And when we are judgmental, stop us with a warning look. Help us to live a life which makes you happy and make our souls a warm and gentle place for you to rest. Your kingdom come. Your will be done. Father God, we think now of those who know you not. Please stop every plan of the enemy over them. Whoever and wherever they may be, demolish the evil schemes of Satan and put into place your plans for good and rescue all who walk in darkness. Your kingdom come. Your will, your will be done. We pray for this your world as it struggles with this virus. We are desperate for your guidance in these frightening times. Lord, out of these dark times, you bring out the very best in people and you make life's victims victorious. The love and the compassion and the mercy from your dear heart shines through the darkness. May your world regain its rightful place in your heart so that we walk in your gentle grace and bring back your peace for all the peoples on this earth. Your kingdom come. Your will be done. To you, sweet Lord, we bring before you those who always suffer. The hungry and the poor, victims of war and brutality, and those who run from homes and family because of fear and desperation. Those who are addicted to drugs and alcohol, and those falsely imprisoned, and for those who simply fall from sight because of social injustice. On our knees then, Father, we give thanks for the Mission Christiana and the people who work there and who cook and who clean and who welcome strangers with love and open arms. Bless all such organisations in this work. It's your work, Father, your work. Wherever these people are, and wherever they are in this world, bless them. 
Jesus, please send us true and faithful leaders and governors to bring peace to those at war, shelter to the homeless and food to the hungry, to bring light to those in darkness and to free the chains of all the captives. Your kingdom come. Your will be done. Our prayers now are for those who are ill in body and in mind, for those in pain and those whose hurt is known only to themselves. Your hands, wounded though they are, are gentle and loving, and just one touch will bring peace to those who suffer. In our hearts we surround with love those we hold dear, And for those you have at last called home, we trust that you keep them in peace and in love, where no troubles of this world will ever touch them. In our hearts, we surround them with our love, those we knew and those who are missed. Your kingdom come. Your, Your will, will be done. done. Creator God, we know you will listen and heed our prayers. And so we ask, may your peace go with us wherever you may send us. May you guide us through the wilderness and protect us through the storm. May you bring us home rejoicing at the wonders that you've shown us. May you bring us home rejoicing once again through your doors. Amen. Amen. Merciful Father, accept these prayers, prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus of Christ. Christ. Amen. Amen. We join all our prayers together as we pray the Lord's Prayer, either in the version on the screen or in the version that you know best, or in your own language. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. As part of the offering of yourselves to God, you might wish to send a donation for the work of the chaplaincy across Fertventura. And some of what we receive is given to support the Spanish Association Against Cancer in its local branch here on the island and some for TIA Fund for international relief and development work. Details for donations can be found on the website. As we are called to follow Jesus, we have to assess our priorities and think of what we really do hold dear. All I once held dear
Jesus has done for us on the cross. We remember and we celebrate in the Eucharistic prayer. The Lord is here. His, His spirit, spirit is, is with us. us. Lift up your hearts. We, we lift them to, to the, the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is right, right to give thanks and, and praise. praise. Almighty God, good Father to us all, your face is turned towards your world. In love you gave us Jesus, your Son, to rescue us from sin and death. Your word goes out to call us home, to the city where angels sing your praise. We join with them in heaven's song. Holy, 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 holy Lord, Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Father of all, we give you thanks for every gift that comes from heaven. To the darkness, Jesus came as your light. With signs of faith and words of hope, he touched untouchables with love and washed the guilty clean. The crowds came out to see your son, yet at the end they turned on him. On the night he was betrayed, he came to table with his friends to celebrate the freedom of your people. Jesus blessed you, Father, for the food. He took bread gave thanks, broke it and said, this is my body, given for you all. Jesus then gave thanks for the wine. He took the cup, gave it and said, this is my blood, shed for you all for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Therefore, Father, with this bread and this cup, we celebrate the cross on which he died to set us free. Defying death, he rose again and is alive with you to plead for us and all the world. Send your spirit on us now, that by these gifts we may feed on Christ with open eyes and hearts on fire. May we and all who share this food offer ourselves to live for you, and be welcomed at your feast in heaven, where all creation worships you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessing and, and honour and, and, and glory and power be yours forever and ever. And ever. Amen. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. For well, we are many, many. We, we are one body, because we all share in the one bread. Every time we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes.
this and remember Jesus. Drink this and remember Jesus.
Christ has met with us and we have met with Christ. We say together, Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. Amen. Our notices, as ever, can be found on the website, 30church.org. And on there you'll see that we're continuing our gifts of love, collecting bags of food and toiletries that can then be distributed to those living in poverty on the island. And if you can let me know if you need any picking up, or if you can drop any bags off to the chaplaincy, or to Sue and Lynn down in Coletta, we'd be really grateful. And after our service today, Sue and Lynn will be taking some of the goods down to the mission. You'll remember that all our services and meetings in the chaplaincy are cancelled at this time until further notice. Keep watching the website for updates on that uh, and the social media and we'll let you know as soon as there are any changes. But also other things will be flagged up in the stop press button on the front page of the website. As we move forward through the world, we take Christ with us and Christ goes before us. We pray as we sing, lead us, Heavenly Father, lead us. God the Father, by whose glory Christ was raised from the dead, strengthen you to walk with him in his risen life. And the blessing of God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, be with you now and always. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In, in the, the name, name of Christ. Christ. Amen. Amen.